Standoff at the Supreme Court, Big Businesses vs. the Sherman Antitrust Act Following the passage of the Sherman Antitrust Act, James J. Hill and the Northern Securities Company battled President Theodore Roosevelt in the Supreme Court, disputing that Hill's company was in violation of the act. Despite the unyielding effort, Hill was defeated, which led to further antitrust court cases, new regulations on businesses, and an epic battle between businesses and government for decades to come. During the Gilded Age came the rise of big businesses. Andrew Carnegie grew his steel company into a massive corporation with the help of a new invention. John D. Rockefeller owned a company called Standard Oil. They bought out smaller companies to form a monopoly. 90% of America's oil was owned by this company. With no competition, everyone had to use Standard Oil. This way they could have higher prices and poor service and still make lots of money. During the Gilded Age, another powerful businessman was James J. Hill. James J. Hill was born on September 16, 1838 in a log cabin in southern Ontario, Canada. When James J. Hill turned 17, he set out for St. Paul, Minnesota. He wanted to be a fur trader, but started off by working various jobs such as a steamboat worker and a mug clerk. He was a great worker and very smart, and these traits would help him a lot in the future. Then Hill turned to the railroad industry that he had been watching for years. He studied how they were built, financed, and where the railroads were going. And during a hard time for the economy, James J. Hill and some business partners managed to buy and gain control of the St. Paul and Pacific Railroads. After a few years, he became president of the company. Hill kept building the railroads through the Dakotas. Hill gained a solid reputation and wanted the best from his workers. Hill was constantly looking for railroads to add to his ever-growing empire, but Hill encountered E.H. Harriman's Union Pacific Railway. Hill allied with financer J.P. Morgan, who was a well-respected financer during this time. The partnership was a success, and Morgan helped James J. Hill get two more railroads the Northern Pacific, and the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroads. However, Harriman was not happy that Hill was gathering up more railroads than him, so a battle ensued between the two railroad tycoons and it caused a stock market panic in 1901. Ironically, the two forces of Hill and Harriman joined together to form the Northern Securities Company in 1901. Hill and Harriman now had complete control of the Midwest. But before the two forces had combined, Congress passed the Sherman Antitrust Act of 1890. This act, quote, made it illegal for businesses engaged in the interstate commerce to combine for the purpose of reducing or restraining competition. To sum this up, it made it illegal for big businesses to combine to get rid of competition. This struggle between the government and the railroad industry really began in 1887. Certain railroad companies were giving lower rates to larger shippers that agreed to use only their railroads. The small railroad companies felt like this was unfair and wanted the government to stand up to the big railroads. The small railroads then went to Congress and expressed their frustrations. Congress listened and passed the Interstate Commerce Act. In the act, a regulatory agency was created to oversee the railroad industry. This agency was known as the ICC. Thus, in 1903, the federal government said that Hill and Harriman's company had violated the Sherman Antitrust Act and that the company should be broken up. However, Hill and Harriman refused to accept defeat, which forced the decision to go to the Supreme Court. Would the Northern Securities Company be the first to fall to the Sherman Antitrust Act? So angered was Hill at being attacked by the federal government that he wrote a letter to D. Willis James, who was a large stockholder, about Teddy Roosevelt saying, What you say about President Roosevelt is very true. He is undoubtedly honest and desires to serve his country. But he is so vain and self-willed that he has no judgment. The only motive he has in bringing suit against the securities company is to aid his chance of renomination in the Middle West, where he thinks it will help him. In defense of the merger, 
Hill argued that the Northern Securities Company was just trying to put its business on a stronger footing and help with expanding trade in the United States. One year later, the ruling of the Northern Securities Company versus United States case came back with a razor-thin decision of 5-4. to four. The dissenting opinion written by Judge White said that the whole court case came down to quote, whether or not Congress had the power to regulate and control the acquisition and ownership of stock in a state corporation. In other words, does Congress have the right to say that a business can or cannot buy stock from another business? Furthermore, White said that the Northern Securities Company was a company that was made up of individuals that went into the market to purchase stock. Because of this, they had not violated the Sherman Antitrust Act. But no matter what anybody said, the Northern Securities Company had to be broken up. The Northern Securities Company case was seen as a huge victory for Roosevelt and impacted his popularity positively. He was even given the name Trustbuster, and the victory also asserted that, quote, the executive branch was even more powerful than the nation's most powerful business institutions. In the following seven years of Roosevelt's presidency, he lived up to his nickname as he went after over 44 more businesses, implementing his famous square deal policy. Two specific companies that share the same fate as the Northern Securities Company were James Duke's American Tobacco and John D. Rockefeller's Standard Oil. Rockefeller's company controlled more than 90% of the oil market industry. Standard Oil was taken to the Supreme Court and was found to be in violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act with a decision of 8 to 1. Likewise, American Tobacco made 90% of America's tobacco products. But on May 29, 1911, the Supreme Court ordered that the American Tobacco Company should be dismantled. As a result of the Northern Securities decision, more laws were put in place. Roosevelt set up the Elkins Act of 1903, which kept railroads from giving cheaper prices to some companies, but not others. But the railroad companies found a loophole in this act and kept giving cheaper prices to big companies. But Teddy wasn't done. Roosevelt started what was known as the Hepburn Act. This act gave more power to the ICC, so much that the ICC could change the shipping costs that the railroads were offering. ICC stands for Interstate Commerce Commission. The Interstate Commerce Commission oversaw the railroads and made sure that they followed the Interstate Commerce Act. The Interstate Commerce Act made railroad companies have, quote, reasonable and just costs for everybody. They were the ones who told Roosevelt about the Northern Securities Company in the first place. Some politicians felt that the ICC had too much power, so they tried to limit the power of the ICC. But when Congress started to take the power away from the ICC, Teddy Roosevelt started to ask the people what they thought while he was on a speaking tour in the West. This proved to be very successful. The Senate was able to keep the power with the ICC. This was a huge gain for Teddy Roosevelt in the fight against big businesses, and it was the first time that a president went to the people to get something he wanted. Even though James J. Hill was dealt a blow with the Supreme Court decision, Hill remained an advocate for his fellow businessmen. Until his death in 1916, Hill remained steadfast in his belief that he should have prevailed in his lawsuit. Criticism would come in the later years about the effect of the Sherman Antitrust Act. Alan Greenspan, the chairman of the Federal Reserve from 1987 to 2006, said this about the Sherman Antitrust Act. Quote, no one will ever know what new products, processes, machines, and cost-saving mergers failed to come into existence killed by the Sherman Antitrust Act before they were born. Following the passage of the Sherman Antitrust Act, James J. Hill and the Northern Securities Company battled President Theodore Roosevelt in the Supreme Court, disputing that Hill's company was in violation of the act. Despite the unyielding effort, Hill was defeated, which led to further antitrust court cases, 
new regulations on businesses, and an epic battle between businesses and government for decades to come.